Thanks for joining us with another episode with the Jeep Guy. Today we've got a cool um, special episode with kind of the beginning and end of the Jeep wagon. So we'll start with the Traveler. This is 1961. This is a 1977 Cherokee Golden Eagle. This is a 1983 Wagoneer Broham. And this is a 1990 Grand Wagoneer. So it's pretty neat. This is beginning to end. There are some variations that were done with the um, XJ. They called it a Grand Wagoneer. There was also the ZJ. They did a Grand Wagoneer package, but these are kind of the true wagon um, that were the Wagoneer package. Anyway, so all of these are original paint, except for that one. The very end one has had some touch up but uh, essentially these are all original. So um, anyway, this is the very first version of the Jeep family wagon. This came with a um, L226 Super Hurricane engine. This is still six volt, three speed manual, four high and low on this. These were built pretty well. They meant to do about 45, 50 miles an hour. You could put an overdrive on them, um, but they were meant for the roads of the time, which were a lot of dirt and back roads. So they did really well at that. Uh, they had a lot of features to be useful for, you know, getting groceries and hauling lumber, or, you know, it was meant to be very versatile. So you could use it for just about everything. The tailgate comes down like this and the license plate actually folds so you can drive with it there and you can still have your license plate visible. It's got the wood rails inside so you can put stuff inside and slide it up and it's not dragging on the floor. The seats all fold down and actually easily come out as well so you can haul a ton of cargo with this thing. So it was wasn't a one trick pony. It could get you to the top of the mountain. You could haul stuff to your cabin or your house. You could do, you know, just about any job you needed to do. They actually ride pretty dang good. It's, it's really surprising how good they ride. Um, this one came out of Wyoming. It's got 35,000 original miles on it. Um, all the original interior. I've got a blanket over the seat just because it's getting torn up from uh, being so old and getting in and out of it that we're trying to keep it preserved as much as possible. But uh, anyway, this one's super fun to drive. We take it snow wheeling and um, all the time in the winter, it's actually got a pretty good heater. Um, it's a lot, a lot of fun. But this is where the Jeep wagon began. Um, there are earlier years that are a little bit different but they're basically the same thing. So you then you have the Wagoneer that started in 1963 and went all the way to 1991. Um, and so we'll jump over to this one to kind of show you the next. This is a 1983, so it's a bit newer, but essentially the same thing as your 63. They were four door V8, a lot of them, not all of them. Uh, manual windows, manual locks. Um, this is the Broham package. So it was kind of the higher end. Um, this one has 69,000 original miles. Have the original window sticker, purchase contract, um, owner's manual, all the original paperwork. This, is, this one is 100% original, all the interior, um, even the radio, it all works. Uh, we take this one on quite a few drives. It is just, it rides and drives amazing. It, it is really, really fun to take out. Uh, we'll pop the hood and show you underneath this one as well. Okay, see, it's still got all the original stickers that they had in here. We haven't really messed with this much, just done tune up and just keeping it as original as possible because it still runs and drives great, doesn't really need anything. 
so but that's your that's your broham um, they also did a limited which was a package above this the grand wagoneer was not available at this time but after the broham they came out with this in 1984 if i remember right and this is the grand wagoneer so when you got this um, they came all with v8s um, automatic they were power windows power door locks air conditioning fog lights cruise control um, all the big nice stuff of the day this was super super fancy for that time this one's pretty much all original as well besides like i said some paint correction on it but other than that um, 79,000 original miles they did replace the stereo in it but they're not she's pretty much how it came but we'll pop the hood and show you on this one as well so again we haven't really done anything to this one um, it's pretty much how it came off the factory or showroom floor runs really good drives great it's it's pretty fun cruising down and it's 100 degrees outside you have the ac on with your cruise control set and just with all the same as all the other cars out there but this one's just a whole lot older um, that that's jeep's great for cruising around so then after in uh, 1974 they came out with the Cherokee package, which was meant to be more of a sporty um, two-door. It's taller. It's a wide track. Uh, most of them are wide track, not all of them, uh, so which gives you a wider stance, bigger wheel wells. Um, this is a Golden Eagle package that was done in 1977. This one's all original stickers and paint. We did some bodywork on the back corner, but the rest of it's pretty much original. We are redoing the interior on this one. Uh, the interior was pretty thrashed, uh, but the Golden Eagle had gold tint on the back windows as well. You can see here it says bron golden bronze. It's pretty cool. So they came with all the stickers and special wheels, well, painted wheels. Um, this one is the V8 as well with a four-speed manual with air conditioning. So. This one is way more sporty to drive than these. These are just like nice, slow cruisers. Um, this one, you can get rowdy with. It's pretty fun. Oh, oh yeah, this one, we'll pop the hood and show you. We've done a bit of work to this one. This one, we fuel injected. We did an Edelbrock intake, HEI ignition. We're still working on it. It's under construction at the moment, but uh, it runs really, really good. It has 60, I can't remember, like 65,000 original miles on it. Um, but can't wait to get our interior back together on this one. And we're going to put some, a lot of miles on this one. But anyway, this was meant for kind of your younger crowd that was going to go off road and, and play around a lot more. So kind of shows you the different vision that Jeep had for each one. So these are more your family cruisers. That was your family cruiser slash work truck. Do, you know, whatever you need to do. And then this was go out in the back country, go camping, the young family that's gonna go out and be more adventurous. So we'll take you for a ride in each one, kind of show you the different experience. We'll start with the Grand Wagoneer. This has all the awesome buzzers that you get with late 80s and early 90s vehicles. But the AC actually works really good in that. But uh, this one had quite a few little issues when we got it because it just been driven and not maintained super well. Um, but now we got everything working as it should. But uh, it's pretty nice having electric windows air conditioning and 
you don't realize how much you enjoy cruise control until you don't have it. But uh, these, the 1990 and 91 are generally the most desirable years because those are the last two years of this Grand Wagoneer and it's after Chrysler bought them. So they improved a lot of things on them. Um, so they are galvanized. Um, they have a lot better electronics and um, a lot better stuff. So they're a lot less prone to problems. Um, this Jeep is Baltic blue, which for me is the most desirable color, but there's also another color called Hunter green, which is really cool. So both uh, two colors that are pretty hard to come by with the sand interior. We looked for a couple years to find this one with, that was really clean. With this interior, the Baltic blue with low miles, um, they're, that you know was pretty well taken care of, but I could fix a few things. But you can see it rides great, drives just nice and smooth, super comfortable. Um, power mirrors, uh, power seats, just power everything. I think the only thing it doesn't have that modern cars have is heated seats. So other than that, you get just about everything you could think of. But um, all these have the AMC 360 V8, um, except for the 1961 we mentioned has the L226 uh, Super Hurricane motor. All right, so here we have 1983 Broham Wagoneer. This one's pretty dang special to me because we bought it from the original owners. Um, so there's just been the original guy that bought this in 1983. Like I mentioned before, we have the um, original purchase contract, window sticker, all the original paperwork with this. But you could tell this guy treasured this thing because there is just no uh, blemishes in it. Like the interior is perfect. There's no tears, no stains. You know, it's just really well taken care of and runs just really good. Um, even the original radio works perfectly. There's, it's not staticky or anything. Just works really well. The AC works, works really nice. Um, you can tell this Jeep was just loved. It just drives really, really nice. But it's a nice cruiser. Uh, we picked this one up in Montana. We've rescued a lot of them from Montana. It's kind of our one of our big honey holes. Um, 69,000 original miles on it. So this one does not, since it's not a limited or a Grand Wagoneer, it does not have um, power windows or power door locks. Everything's manual that way. It doesn't have cruise control, but it does have the AMC 360. It's a three-speed automatic. Uh, with the air conditioning. Uh, I have like the original build sheet, he ordered it exactly like this. So it's, it's pretty nice and you can tell he treasured it and he passed away and then his uh, daughter hung on to it for quite a while and it sat in the barn. And then uh, I guess her f health was failing and so um, we bought it from her. And uh, it's our, it's pretty awesome to be able to take care of this and continue its legacy, be the next person to make sure it survives. But you can see, there's no squeaks, no rattles, just cruises down the highway really nice. Um, we've taken this one on a couple hundred mile road trips and it's just really comfortable and like stepping back in time. Back in the 70s and 80s, this was your perfect family wagon. When I was growing up, these were 
everywhere. Everybody had one. Uh, you just don't see them around much anymore, especially in this kind of shape. All right, next we're gonna go to the 1977 Cherokee Golden Eagle. Um, this is a whole different ball game like, than these two. These are nice family cruisers that are comfortable. This is also comfortable, but whole different ball game in mind. This was built more that you're gonna go off road, sporty, uh, whole different idea. Somebody more going adventure, camping and whatnot. This will be a little bit different because we have not finished the interior, so we have no seats. But um, we're going to include it in the video anyway to show my dedication to the videos and you guys. I'm going to drive this without a seat on a step stool, which is very difficult to do. Well, like I mentioned before, this one is fuel injected with the Edelbrock intake, HE ignition and a little other few things to make her go better. Um, so it's very hard to hold on without a seat. Um, but anyway, this has the um, S package as well. So we have air conditioning, cruise control, wide track. Um, this is just meant, like I mentioned, for much more fun, aggressive driving with the four speed manual and the um, AMC 360. So I have to be careful not to throw myself into the back, but uh, she's very rambunctious and likes to go. So. <laughs> now, lots of guys like to throw LSs and stuff in them, but if you build these AM360s right, they have crazy good torque and power, and it doesn't take much to do it. So I prefer to always keep the drivetrain original and just modernize it um, to the 20th century. And it's amazing what you can get these things to do. So this single cruise, whoa, baby, 75, 80, no problem. Um, and then cruise the back roads and it's really comfortable with air conditioning and cruise control. It's pretty awesome. But, yeah hoping to take this on our vintage rally. We're gonna go from basically Idaho to Arizona. If I can get the interior done in time, it'll be pretty fun. Uh, this is just great for long road trips. But uh, it kind of gives you a different idea between the Wagoneer, the Grand Wagoneer so far, and then the Cherokee. Um, just a whole different animal, even though they look very similar. Come on from the outside, but, oh geez, <laughs> gotta hang on. But when you drive it, it is not the same at all, where this thing just feels like it wants to just rip and go. <laughs> Last but definitely not least, we're going to take a drive in the 1961 Traveler. Um, like I mentioned before, this guy was built to haul the family, do the job. You know, most people did working class jobs at that time. So this would have been able to haul anything you needed, travel any roads you needed to go on. Um, just basically the catch all do all. So this one has 35,000 original miles, um, much less um, amenities than the last Jeep we were in. So it's still six volts, so it's kind of a slow crank. Um, we don't have air conditioning, uh, power steering, uh, power brakes, disc brakes, uh, cruise control. We do have windows to let the cold air in, uh, but that's about it. You get a three-speed manual, 
uh, the L226 Super Hurricane motor, which is about 190 foot-pounds of torque, uh, around 100 horsepower, if I remember right. A lot more, whoops, a lot more body roll than the other ones, but she wasn't meant for super high speed, about 45.50, about as fast as you want to go in this guy. This one does have a heater, which is pretty nice in the winter. Pretty luxurious for this Jeep. So you can control your air there. This is your temp control. You do have a defroster as well. If I remember I turn, yeah, this one. That turns on the fan like that. And that controls how much air comes through. This is your light switch. This is your choke control for there. And of course your ashtray. Everything back then had an ashtray. Up here we have our spotlight. Up there it's six volt, still works. Now these are not synchronized at the first gear, so you gotta slow to a crawl. And then we're gonna turn the steering wheel a million times to make a U-turn. Then turn it back. Now you got your Willis Overland emblem there. Horn still works. This right here is your control for your windshield wipers. That they are vacuum operated, so they're pretty slow unless it's raining. So it provides enough um, anti-friction so that the wipers can go. But if you do it when it's dry, they really don't want to go. So this is a radio that was added sometime in the late 60s. It's AM only, so we don't pick up a whole lot of radio stations. This does have the Sparta blinkers on it, which were added to it. Jeep is 100% uh, no frills, just get you from A to B and do the job. Let's see here, oh. You of course do have ashtrays in the back in case your kids wanted to smoke as well, or your buddies. Uh, back in the 60s, just about everybody smoked, so. What's pretty amazing on a lot of these is, uh, I think it was this one, yeah. Looks like it's never been used for cigarettes, which is pretty surprising coming from Wyoming. Anyway, that pretty much sums it up. We just kind of want to give you an overview of the wagon. We could go into much more detail on all of this, but then that would be a three hour video. But uh, it kind of gives you an idea of the um, life of the Jeep wagon from beginning to end. It's pretty cool to see them all together. So thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Leave us some comments if you uh, have ideas of other videos of other Jeeps we'd have, comparisons, things like that. And uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you next time.